The telephone mechanic was regarded very highly. He knew about electricity, and that was something any man could be proud of. In a small country town, the telephone mechanic became as important a man as the local vet. Ed, will you fix this blasted phone for me? It's gone What's wrong with it, Arch? Automatic exchanges giving a 24-hour service are being installed all over the country. Thus does the post office bring the latest development in telephone service, keeping him in touch, modernizing his communication facilities. The demand for fast, clear, dependable nationwide service has been met in the Commonwealth by extraordinary and purposeful telephone development. Today, it is the instrument of a personal service rendered by an army of faithful, competent men and women. Change has always been a part of telecommunications. From the time the telephone was invented, the equipment used to send and switch messages has been changing constantly. The early manual equipment of the past has evolved through automatic systems to the computer control technology of today. It's the city DSC here. That fault you reported this morning. Like any other organization, telecom must adapt to these changes in technology in order to provide the service demanded by its customers. That's right. 331 OK, then. Thanks very much. As technology moves further towards stored program control systems, such as AXE, the organisation for its installation and maintenance must also change. During this evolutionary process, it is important to consider the individuals involved, their career prospects, promotional opportunities and job satisfaction, for changes in technology will bring about significant changes in the working environment. Well, I think there's always going to be work for, plenty of work for technicians. I think that really they're the backbone of telecom. The National Maintenance Organisation for SPC local exchanges will consist of four levels, the National Support Centre provides the highest level of system support for staff and is located at Telecom headquarters. At the next level, state support centres will be established in each capital city. These centres provide the highest level of system support within each state. District support centres will be established in each relevant urban DTM area. These centres provide high-level system support to field staff as requested, or when field staff are unable to restore service within the specified time period. Within the DTM district, exchanges will be progressively organised into exchange maintenance groups. Excluded from these groups will be major telephone exchanges, such as tandems and 24-hour stations. These remain single districts because of their size and complexity. They will, however, be associated with a district support centre, Staff in existing single district exchanges, which contain significant amounts of crossbar or step equipment, may elect to remain in that situation until the exchanges are converted to All SPC right. systems. All right, hold on one minute, please. When the other exchanges are combined, each group will contain upwards of two or more exchanges and will be under the control of an EMG officer in charge. Working at four exchanges means that I get a bigger variety of equipment to work on, a larger incidence of faults than would normally occur in a single exchange, and you also get to be out and about and not in the, the building all the time. I feel that some people may find disadvantages in, in moving around. Some people would prefer to stay in, in the one place, come to work every day. Uh, there are definitely time disadvantages because you've got to travel from one place to the other. But personally, I feel that the advantages outweigh those disadvantages. From the point of view of young technical officers, I think they have a, a better scope now because we're getting upgrades in positions with the new equipment. And also, you're working in an environment where there are a lot of people above you and consequently you act in their positions when they're not there. I feel that we can cope better with technical problems that occur because we've got a, a bigger staff with a broader technical experience and we've got someone to call on if you're in trouble. Most of the work now carried out in an exchange will continue in each EMG. 
In addition to SPC maintenance, EMG staff must also attend to the ongoing service order work, maintenance of the residual crossbar equipment, and the other switching and non-switching equipment installed in each exchange. The allocation of duties within the group will be at the discretion of the group officer in charge and will be dependent on work requirements and needs. The overall number of staff required to carry out the work in each EMG will be determined through the normal manpower planning programs. Within the group, some staff may work as functional specialists in one or more of the exchanges, while others may work across a range of duties. Some exchanges will generate sufficient on-site work to occupy staff for long periods, whilst others may not. Staff will attend these exchanges as required. Exchange maintenance group staff retain the responsibility for initial diagnosis and fault rectification of the ANA-30 equipment. However, the DSC may carry out this work on request. Battery and power equipment must be maintained, together with building maintenance and security. On new installations, extensions or conversions, it is important that maintenance staff liaise with the equipment installers, for this will provide valuable expertise and training to those who will subsequently maintain the equipment. Service order work remains an important activity within every exchange. In order to provide customers with the most efficient service under the new system, this work needs to be planned carefully, utilizing to best advantage the resources within each group. EMG staff will perform subscriber category changes associated with service orders. Those performing this work will be required to test the completed service, operating VDUs to perform the appropriate category change. This will provide an opportunity for all levels of staff to work on SPC systems. Staff who work flexibly across the exchanges in the group will be provided with appropriate means of transport. There are no objections to staff commencing or ceasing duty at an exchange in the group which is located nearer their home, provided the district operational requirements are met. The new organizational arrangements will also give assistant technicians the chance to increase their experience by working in a number of exchanges and will enable them to assume greater responsibility, especially when working without supervision in unstaffed exchanges. They will be expected to carry out the appropriate tests to check their work. With telephone service order work, it is expected that subscriber category changes will be performed at the EMG headquarters.
full training will be provided for the EMG staff to enable them to undertake first in diagnosis of the ANA-30 equipment. The appropriate maintenance manuals, test equipment and spare boards will be provided. It is expected that EMG staff will be able to clear the vast majority of ANA-30 faults or other system disturbance situations. The new maintenance arrangements should help improve the job satisfaction of staff as it allows them to more fully utilize their skills. The gradual implementation of the new arrangements, together with suitable technical and supervisory training, should help to minimize or overcome any problems of adjustment. The backup for EMGs is the district support centre. Staff in the centre will be in a position to provide assistance with fault diagnosis on request. The centre will also become actively involved in correcting outages after the specified time period has elapsed. It will analyse performance data for exchanges in the district and provide these details to each EMG. DSC staff will develop programs for routine maintenance and the implementation of work specifications. DSCs would tend to be working on several exchanges, so the scope of experience is going to be broader. So, therefore, they'll be able to uh, be more qualified to uh, have an idea of the overall picture. Uh, I think the DSC's got a, a real part to play in this new maintenance for, uh, philosophy because uh, it gives the exchanges an immediate backup, somewhere they can go to and, and on a personal level, be able to um, help them with the fault. A lot more people are going to get access to the equipment and they're going to have the chance to do the first in analysis. In my mind, a lot of the analysis should have been done first in any way. And then when you did get in trouble, with a and faults especially, then you should have called in a fellow from the DSC who has a broad scope of experience on the equipment. Now, of course, every exchange will have access to the equipment directly, and of course, we'll get the training. EMG staff will be given the opportunity for work rotation into DSCs. This will be arranged to suit the needs of the centres and district staff and will provide first-hand experience of DSC operations. Okay. Hello, Newtown DSC. Uh, it's Bill Rose at Lakemba here. Yes, Bill. We've now had a fall for 18 minutes and we're requesting assistance. It's in the 7590000 SLN number 2. Yes, we've got a test mark and we're seeing the disturbances on the screen. And it seems to be getting up to the stage of the G relay operating, but we don't seem to be getting past that point. All right, Bill, we'll go through a board change procedure. While the majority of faults can be rectified by changing a printed board assembly, there will be occasions when a board replacement does not clear the problem and other diagnostic work will be required. These situations will provide an ideal opportunity for EMG staff to work closely with district support centre staff, thereby gaining valuable experience. Yeah, right. it looks like it's that board. Yeah. We'll look after the uh, replacement board and uh, thanks very much. Yeah, bye bye. 
Installation of AXE equipment is accelerating and plans are in hand to meet the operation and maintenance requirements of this system. An AXE maintenance cell will be provided in a number of DSCs. As the AXE program advances, more cells will be established. AXE training will be provided in line with the installation program. The DSC will also be responsible for the operation and maintenance aspects of the AOM system where it is installed. It's finally we've got a resolve to the, um, the dispute on technology. It's about time, it's taken years, and never should have. Uh, with Axe coming in, finally we're going to see some exciting new equipment. I think it's exciting because it's, uh, I'm only a young fellow, I've got a lot to look forward to, I hope. The state support centres will be staffed by engineers and technical officers who will operate as a team. Within the state they will provide the highest level of support on maintenance matters and undertake other technical investigations into the SPC systems. The State Support Centre will interface with DTM staff and be the focal point for interaction with the National Support Centre. The National Support Centre provides the highest level of system support within the organisation. It provides for the testing and developing of new or modified hardware and software. It prepares and distributes new or modified system program tapes and it is the prime centre for resolution of design problems. The new maintenance organisation will provide a sound base for operating and maintaining our switching network, whilst recognising the need for job opportunities and staff satisfaction. New technology is always good with limitations, as long as you can realise that people have got to have jobs. So as long as um, people are prepared to accept the new technology and flow with it rather than... I always flow with it because I know that it's a thing to come and you know, nobody's going to stop it as long as it comes in the right time and the right way. So you've got to change yourself to suit. <laughs>